you know, like a couple times after meeting them, hanging out with them again. It was like, oh, what's your name? And I was like, oh, Kenny, oh, we've been passing, we've been calling you past my cut for like the past month now. And I was like, oh. <laughs> hey, man, true, true, tra- I mean, uh, true transparency. We've been calling you Mr. Cup this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> man, what it is. Hey, we, put, we put some respect on his name. Man. It's, it's like, cup. man, it was like Mr. Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's sweet though, dog. Yeah, that is, <laughs> you know that is yeah. sweet, man. Mr. Cup. You might have to, you might have to adopt that. You know what I'm saying? It's a new moniker, Mr. Cup. You know what I'm saying? I like the way that sounds. Like sound. <laughs> Hops and Stocks podcast is presented by Hundred Spoke Media Group. We encourage our listeners to drink responsibly. Please note, we are not financial advisors. We do not offer or provide financial advice. Welcome back to the Hops and Stocks Podcast. This is episode 35, brought to you by Hunter Spoke Media Group. Uh, what's up, what's today, up? today we got the homeboy Kenny from uh Pass My Cup. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Yo, Welcome yo, to the yo. podcast, brother. I'm sorry, Happy to have you thanks, pass my cup. Yeah, thanks yeah, for the yeah, invite. Yeah. Thanks for the invite, fellas. Thanks for you the know, invite. You're not gonna get offended if I call you pass my cup a couple times. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, say it. Kenny passed my cup. However, you say I, I right, got people that's that your brand. You know what I mean? That's your like, brand. Um, we was afraid to call. We didn't know what your name was because I met them through this event. I was doing a beer mm-hmm. and yoga event at this brewery, and um, you know, a couple people pulled up, and I ended up linking up with them after the fact after the event. But for the whole entire time, you know, um, once they started following me, it was like, oh, you know, pass my cup doing this, pass my cup doing that, and then. You know, like a couple times after meeting them, hanging out with them again, it was like, "Oh, what's your name?" And I was like, "Oh, Kenny." Oh, we've been passing. We've been calling you past my cut for like the past month now. And I was like, oh. <laughs> "Hey, man, true, true, tra- I mean, uh, true transparency. We've been calling you Mister Cup this entire time." <laughs> <laughs> man, what it is. Hey, we, put, we put some respect on his name. Man. It's, it's like, cup. man, it was like Mister Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's sweet though, dog. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is sweet, yeah. man. Mr. Cup. You might have to you might have to adopt that, you know what I'm saying? It's a new moniker, Mr. Cup. You uh, know what I'm saying? I like the way that sound. I like the way that sound. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, we're gonna we're gonna get into your story, but you know what I'm saying, like we always do about this time, we're gonna kick it over to my homeboy, Mr. What's in this can. What you drinking on tonight, beat up? So yeah, man, let's talk about it. Today I have a brew from a uh, Goliath. What is it? Goliath Brewing Company. It's called Think Peace. Um, it has it's a double IPA. Um, I think what's special about this beer is I think they they focused on the hops in this one. So it has Citra, Rewaka, and Sabro hops. Uh, I took a couple swigs of this before we start recording, so I poured it up. It looks nice. It's good. So it's it's kind of hazy. Um, it's hoppy. It's citrusy. It's kind of watery, but it has like a almost like a afterburn. Not afterburn. That's a, that's a bad descriptive word for it. It just has like a. It's kind of like harsh on the back end of it. <laughs> um, mm. You can well, definitely, we, uh, huh? I was gonna say. So we know where this review is going. Yeah. <laughs> you can definitely tell that. It's a slow roll downhill, man. <laughs> 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 I mean, I don't want to be the bad guy every time, but you know. Oh, man, you, you've been so well behaved of late, man. I think we need one of your patented. <laughs> you could definitely smell the citrus in this one. Um, yeah, let's get to it. Yeah, we need, oh, we need man, a dog walk. A small sip. Okay. We need a dog walk. Let, let, let's, talk, <laughs> let's talk about what's in this can, man. <laughs> uh, I forgot to say that it's a collaboration with Untitled Art. Price point is 10 bucks for this one can. Hmm. And for this 10, for this 10 piece... It's not worth it. <laughs> I just, I didn't, I didn't appreciate what was in this can. Um, it's okay. It's not a good reach. It's definitely not a good beer for if you're just starting your craft beer journey. This is for a more seasoned palate, if anything. You have to have been already on your journey and, you know, you develop that palate for this type of a beer. Um, it's not awful, but... To me, it's, you know, 
it's it did too much <laughs> in my <opinion. laughs> it was, they they tried too much with this one. Um, I'm gonna give this one a three seven five. Um, bro, it's a seven point eight ABV, so it'll get Not you that working for it. Yeah, get you yeah. decently. Two of them, you have you checking the back of your eyelids for holes, but you know <laughs> it's a good one. I mean, it's it's an okay one. So I'm gonna get this one a, a three seven five. Was there an IBU on that can beat up? No, I looked for that. It was no IBU on here. What'd you um, say about the hose? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I thought I heard that too, man. Looking for <laughs> something in the back of your eyes. <laughs> holes. Holes. Not okay, I got you. Oh. Checking the back of your eyelids for holes. Yeah, you got to enunciate, brother. <laughs> yes. With this group, I have to. Right. Um, I was just asking. So once again, this is Stink Peace. Um, Goliath Brewing, Peace. three seven five, collaboration with Untitled Art. It's a it's a dope kit. I like the artwork on this can though. It's yeah, nice can cute. work is lovely. It yeah, looks classy. It's, it's, yeah, uh, I've had a couple of uh, Goliath Brewing man, and they yeah, me too. Be pretty good. Yeah, I'm not really hip to the to the hop game, so I don't know if these are top of the line uh, hops. Citra, Ruaka, and Sabro. So yeah, that's surprising yeah. that Untitled Art put their name on it, and it's, it's not really fulfilling you. Mm, yeah, yeah. Untitled Art has had some misses, though. Real you know saying, <laughs> yeah. But to kind of piggyback on that 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 hops conversation, man, that's probably something that we should we should focus on like one month and do a theme of just buying beers with different hops to try to see what we what our palates align with. I like, yeah. yeah, I know Blast was talking about in our pre pod that um about the guy who had the hops farm. Yeah, my lost his context though. So I think yeah. you got him on you got him on camera though. He I don't know if he said his his, his information on there. Well, it was I'll it was Sonder. It was Sonder Brewing. And we could probably yeah, we go back up there. Sonder. Yeah, I was thinking I could call up and you know ask for the hop guy. Who lost the context? <laughs> That'd be me. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be me. <laughs> okay. All right, All right. All right. So, who you kicking it over to? That be me. Go ahead and you go ahead and see what you got. <laughs> yeah. You own this segment now. <laughs> All right. Well, shit, man. Before uh, we do anything, can I get a heel? Yeah. <laughs> I said, can I get a heel? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, y'all ain't riding with me, but we definitely riding tonight. Go Tar Heels. We took care of Coach K. Yeah. Now it's time for Kansas next. Rock, 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 Rock. I'm with the black. I'm, I'm riding with the African American coach, man. I'm yeah, there you go, up, man. man. Hopefully, uh, we taking it home tonight, popping bottles, all that good stuff. But back to the business at hand. Um, tonight, I'm reviewing a Rheingeist crumb cake. Um, here's a can. You know, looks kind of cinnamony, chocolatey. Rheingeist is a, a big player in the Cincinnati uh, craft market. So I am picked this one up. You know, when you hear crumb cake, I mean, that gets my attention automatically. Yes, sir. Um, the ingredients is beer with coffee, lactose, and Doug, if you could help me out on this one, the last <laughs> ingredient I is vanilla, vanilla something. Lactose. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, for the h &S family out there, it's got vanilla ass track in here. <laughs> <laughs> and it says uh, it's a streusel you can sip. So let's see. Oh, let me get you out of color right quick. Nice little brown pour. Oh yeah. yeah, I love crumb cake, man. That's one of them guilty pleasures you grab out the gas station. Hey. This joint kind of smells like the uh, the Sonder apple streusel. I don't know if it's gonna taste like it, but it's got a similar nose. That's sweet. We used to kill them butter crumbs in uh, in the dorms in college, man. Mm. This is it's probably like a touch off of being really stellar for me. Oh. I think I think those of you who like beer you know with flavor but not too much sweet you'd probably like this for me it's missing just a tad bit of that sweet note but it definitely tastes like cake okay what's that abv on it um it's in the sevens seven even oh yeah nice. i think i would it, it, it doesn't really say man it just says crumb cake on there and they mentioned okay. streusel but you know in terms of a beer it doesn't say okay well, what is it? Which one does it taste like? Does it give you like a stout kind of flavor? Does it nah, give you like a brown ale kind of flavor? 
probably closer to that brown ale flavor. It's definitely not a stout. It's, you know, way lighter than a stout. Um, you, you definitely can taste, you know, that cinnamon note. And I mean, it, it, they really do do a good job of, you know, nailing kind of that cake flavor. So I, I think initially I was going to give it a four, but I, I think I'm going to take it up a little bit because I think they did a good job. They just didn't quite make it as sweet as I would like, but, you know, for judging just not on my palate, but maybe as a, on a more wide scale, I think I'm going to get this a four and a half. Is it like a, right above a porter as far as like the consistency on it? Nah, I, I would say a porter is probably a little thicker. A porter's thicker? Okay. Yeah. I mean, this, this really, you know, for those of y'all that had it, this really kind of reminds me of that apple streusel consistency wise. Okay. I like that color. Similar flavors, just not as sweet. It's good, though. Let's throw it over to my man, uh, Mr. <laughs> Ass Track himself. <laughs> 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 Doug, what's, what you got? It's not funny, it's not funny anymore, fellas. <laughs> it's always going to be funny. <laughs> can, I jump in, how to, can I jump in real quick? How, to, how did the name Ass Track come about? Oh, man. <laughs> We're ass. glad you asked. We're glad you asked. <laughs> well, we're we going to let him do the beer review first and then the <laughs> These guys are really drilling that joke into the ground. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even make sense anymore, but anyway. It makes perfect sense. All right. We're staying with the uh, RG family, Ryan Geis. I grabbed this, man. And just um, off, off the humble, I was looking for you know something kind of fruity and that's what i got man i'm i'm gonna act like i haven't had it before but i'm already like three beers in with this particular case has a nice you know nothing too astounding but the the note what you have is a uh, mango blood orange smash is what it's called coming in only at five percent but highly drinkable man um I think Ryan guys this is probably one of my favorite Ryan guys as far as what they've done with the fruit notes. Um, it's a great compliment with the, the mango and the blood orange. And, you know, cat's out the bag already. I already gave this over a four on our uh, IG page, but I just wanted to bring it back to your attention, man. Um, if you're into like a fruit style, uh, Zango Crush. I'm not even sure if it's a beer, man. I mean, I, I know it's a beer, but it, it goes down so nicely. I didn't know what glass to put it in, so I just put it in one of these. <laughs> Sound like a good summertime one. Is it? Is yeah. it perfect for you know the outdoor <laughs> season? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I think I put in the group text that you may like it because it kind of gives you that that uh, rattler that rattler feel taste. a little bit. It's not as sweet. Ask that. Yeah, it's not as sweet, so you're not going to get overwhelmed with the sweetness. But the the flavors of the fruit really come through. I mean, so. If, uh, if I remember, I think I gave this like a four and a quarter. So, you know, that's it. Uh, RG. And it says RG Bev. So, you know. Yeah, I don't know if that's like a different line they're doing. I think I've right. seen that a couple times now. I mean, they, you know, Ryan Geist, like we said, is a heavy hitter in Cincinnati. So they, they got kind of like their Bubbles line, the RG Bev line. Yeah. A couple different lines. So. Well, I mean, big ups to, you know, the hometown brewery because they i think they did well with this one yeah so that's two for two for them i mean two yeah yeah they, they did a really good floor. job on that well I'm, i ain't trying to pound on my guy tolls uh but you know to answer kenny's question the the vanilla joke just came from a uh mispronunciation of the word what is it abstract extract <laughs> Extract. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. See, it's a tough word to pronounce. And, you know, you, you get your ASSs in there, and there you have Astrid. Hey, Kenny, in my yeah. defense, man, I have a sight problem. So when I was reading <laughs> off when I was reading <laughs> off the can, I would take my glasses off, and when I, when I put them back on, and I said the word, and it came out clearly wrong. These guys he doubled back on it. These guys, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, he doubled down on it. He doubled they down. They didn't have any sympathy, man, of my eyesight problem. I mean, they just <laughs> – I think humiliation was, was their goal. 
there's there's an entire episode dedicated to Vanilla Abstract, man. And it's mm. we know Sanchez hates it, man, but it's still funny every time extract. somebody say it. Vanilla you can extract. say it now. <laughs> yeah, man. If you get a chance, you know, go go check that episode out, man. I think it might have been episode twenty one, if I'm not mistaken. That these. sounds about right. It's it's man, it's burning to my head, man. <laughs> <laughs> these guys, these guys are so corny, man. They just love it. <laughs> There's a lot of a lot of fans out there that you won over with that too, man. <laughs> They're corny <Yeah>. too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you shitting on the fans. <laughs> you know, all publicity is good publicity. There you hey, go. That's, how, there you that's, go, that's how we look at that's it. What we've been trying to tell him. Facts. Hey man, I don't want to be unprofessional, but this dog wants me to take him out, so I'll be right back. <laughs> All good. Exit. <laughs> Episode twenty-one out there for the listeners, man. If you want to revisit that hilarious moment in history. All right. But I guess it's on me to. And don't don't look up that corny <laughs> stuff, man. <laughs> you know why he popped back in? Though. Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Man, he's like he's a like a magician, out. man. He came out of nowhere. <laughs> on some Take your dog outside, stuff. man. <laughs> just like what a scoundrel talks about, he just pops up. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what you got there, e? let me hop into my beer review, man. Um, drinking. It's first time yeah. with this use this background, so I got to try to. Place it's this perfect. can. I can see it now. So we got a Wicked Weed. Uh, they're based out of Asheville. Um, Asheville is like one of the meccas of, of craft brewing. And it's a place that I definitely need to make it down to for a long weekend. Um, I rock with Wicked, Wicked Weed. They got like a like a whole little setup in the in the Charlotte airport. So anytime I would fly out to Virginia to see my mom, like I would always stop there and, and try what they have. But this is a uh, citrus passion fruit haze. Um, it's a double hazy IPA with tangerine and passion fruit. Um, it's checking in at 8.7 AP, <clears throat> excuse me, 8.7 ABV. Uh, so, you know, it's getting up there. Um, I'm digging it. It's not really boozy being 8.7. I thought it was have a little bit more alcohol taste. And uh, with the name Dr. Dank, you would expect it to be like extremely hoppy. But it's not. I don't know what the IBV, IBU is on here, but it's a really smooth drink and brew. I guess I should show y'all what it looked like. Um, kind of odd that it says haze because it's not hazy yeah, at all. Clear looking. Yeah, it's it's a little bit of fog. You know what I mean? But for the most part, it's it's pretty clear. So um, a little bit of false advertisement, Wicked Weed. So I ain't gonna knock y'all for that. But I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I was expecting. But when it said haze. I was expecting it to be cloudy, and it's not really cloudy at all. Um, this is a good drinker, though. Um, I'm probably going to get us a four and a quarter, uh, but definitely revisit. Um, and something probably really, really good to drink, you know what I'm saying, around around the pool during the summer, warmer weather. Once again, Wicked Weed, Dr. Dank, four and a quarter. <laughs> well, so that, with that name, you would think Dr. it was Dank. Dank. Trees or something, right? Thank you. Yeah, well, that's why I was thinking it was gonna be like really hoppy, and it's it's not at all. Like, I'm probably gonna look up the, AB, the IBU and see what it is because it don't. It's not checking in really high with the IBUs. Like, it's a really mellow IPA. Um, like I said, I'm digging it. But once hey, again, yeah, you still you still gonna have a uh, pool scene at your new spot, right? Yeah, the condo got a um, nice little courtyard, got a pool, uh, grills. You know what I'm saying? So. As soon as it's, it's built and we get done, everybody invited. You know what I'm saying? Hops and Stocks checking in. E's new spot this summer. Um, Am I I guess. Gotta have It'll the house warming party. Huh? Gotta have the house warming party. Oh, yeah, for sure, right. for sure, for sure. You know what I mean? Um, we get some content and hang out by the pool and drink a lot of beer. Hey, pass my cup, man. You, you there. You there. Yeah, you had to come check us out, man. You, you ain't too far. I'm down in, like I said, I, I need to come down there and mess with y'all, man. Y'all look like y'all got the craft scene popping down there in Atlanta, man. Um, the before we but, down here for sure. Yeah, before we go get too far into the conversation, man, we want to welcome once again Kenny um, from Pass My Cup Podcast. Uh, I think you and B Dub connected, you know what I'm saying, on Instagram. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying, chopped it up about, you know, us hopping on each other's social media and, and doing some right, content, right, man. Right. So welcome, welcome to the podcast, man. Like I said, we read the background. Looks like you got your hands in a lot of things from, you know what I'm saying, making your own brew, radio stations. So we're going to give you an opportunity to review what you're drinking on and, and talk about what you got going on down in Atlanta. 
Well, I'm actually drinking on one of the brews that I made. Um, a flex, a, big flex. Man, yeah, yeah. yeah. Give, hold on, man. Give it up. Big up. flex. My cup on that one, man. Give well, it hold, on, hold on, hold on. You know, it's we gonna we gonna get to it. You know, let me review it first. <laughs> I'm about to say, blast. Make sure you insert the claps when he when they come across that part. Um, this yeah, is about to be a five mug if he made it himself. <laughs> I, don't, yeah, I don't know I if this made, is gonna be an objective myself. review. I made I made it myself. Um, it's a pineapple wit beer. Okay. Um, I put some coriander up in there, some uh, orange peel, threw some chamomile up in there. Um, good. It's, a, it's a light drinking drink. Um, you see the color? Okay. Yeah. I'm about to drink that to pass my cup glass, you know, passmycupusa.com. Go ahead and grab you one of these. The flex. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's um honestly. I'm gonna give it like a three. I got I gotta it's a little too sweet for me. Like the pineapple is like pineapple, you know. Um yeah. I think I obviously I put a little bit too much in there. And that's kind of one of those man. things where, you know, you want to uh have that that flavor, you kinda gotta like, you know, test it out. You either go too much or go too little. Right. You know, because we live in a day and age when you say, oh, my beer has this pineapple in there. People want to taste it. You know, if they, if they don't taste the pineapple, it's like, this ain't pineapple, you know. <laughs> so yeah. I'm going to have to scale it back next time. But um, it's definitely a good start to uh, what's the, uh, where I'm what's the, ABV, what's the ABV on that? Five and a half. Five and a half. That ain't bad for that type of style. So, so what's the process of actually judging what your ABV is? I mean, because you you're coming with a little more knowledge than we have as far as the, the crafting side of things. So, how how do you make that determination? Well, as far as um, what's the ABV on there? Yeah, the, the like content of the alcohol, it? right? Um, without going into too much detail, basically within the um, well, the calculations I put them into a system. Oh, okay. So when I have my uh, when I when I put my brew together, I I go into the computer, I log into my uh, brewer's friend, which is a software that they have online, and you pretty much just enter the um, the quantity of each ingredient. So basically, x amount of pounds of this grain, x amount of pounds of that grain, x amount of pounds of you know this grain, how much hops you're using, and then how much water you're using as well. So basically, once you in the, in the mash, that's basically like a, making a, a a tea. So that's when your wort comes in, and the temperature in the water is pretty much breaking down the starches from those grains. And depending on what that number is, give or take, um, that's when you take your gravity reading and all that. That number, and then you subtract it once. You subtract that from the gravity you get once your fermentation is done. And then those two numbers, that difference, then you multiply it by a number, and then that's what gives you your ABV. Oh, okay. Man. Damn, so there's some real math involved. That is so it. That Does that make sense? Or can I make yeah. it? I thought, nah. I thought it'd be like moonshiners, man. They just shake the damn glass. Shake the bubbles. <laughs> shake the bubbles and see how many bubbles are coming up. This might be yeah, this might be pretty a, much a, how much how much sugar you have in your wort and then how much sugar is remaining after the yeast eats it. Would a hydrometer give you that answer as well? Correct, but you still have to go through the process. But that okay. you, you would use the hydrometer to measure your numbers. Okay, gotcha. Man, you you're trying, to come, you're trying to come intellectual, man. What what are you talking about? Yeah. Nah, well, so, well, a hydrometer, a hydrometer <laughs> You know what I mean? You trying to flex like a hydrometer? Also <laughs> I ain't trying to flex. I'm just trying to understand, brother. <laughs> what is that? What is that? You said, he, you said he's trying I'm, to kick I'm, knowledge. Right. <laughs> <laughs> let, let pass cuck. Let, let Mr. Pastor Cuck kick the knowledge, bro. <laughs> I mean, dude, come like, on. Will the flex capacitor do, give me that same thing? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> But see, no, listen, but honestly, <laughs> hey, you know, all, all jokes aside, there is no dumb answer. Sorry, there is no dumb question, you know, ask away. And if I know the answer, I know it. If I don't, then, hey, that's just me to have homework. Man, but, cats hate on my hydrometer, man. No, <laughs> that, that, wasn't a, that wasn't a dumb question. That was a very intelligent question, but we didn't know he knew about this stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hydrometer. Yeah, hydrometer is very, very important when it comes to brewing, for sure, for sure. Well, he wanted you to know that he knew, so now you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kenny, how, how did you get started on your craft brew journey? That's what we like to call it. I mean, obviously, you deep in the game right now, but, you know, tell us about a time where, you know, you were kind of just starting off in this game. Where you were drinking uh, like. <laughs> well, actually, I wasn't. When Uh-oh. I first started, well, the, when I first started drinking beer, I was drinking. Uh, the first beer that I actually fell in love with was Mick Ultra, and okay. this was way back in college days. Um, pretty much, the lime? I was, I was, it had the uh, lime in it. Mick Ultra lime. Nope. This is before the flavors even came out. Actually, oh, really? the, the when the Michelob Ultra lime came out, that was like the second flavor from. That was like the first flavor, should I say? So they had the original, and then the lime one came out. Okay, yeah. I, I enjoyed that. So when the lime yeah. joint came out, I was like, oh, shit. Like, you know, I, I was crunk. <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, um, I moved on to domestic. So I, I moved on to imports. So yeah. I was drinking Stella's, Heineken's, and I was really on those two, just mainly Stella. So I thought I was the shit when I was drinking Stella's. Not the chalice. And... Told y'all. Told y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's your yeah. take on Coors Light, though, man? What's your take on Coors Light? Um... You know, I, I could think of Coors Light if it's if I'm feeling like that. Me myself personally, I don't I don't craft beer shame. You know, if someone's not drinking craft beer, as long as they're just sitting back chilling, relaxing, and we all having a good vibe, then you know that's that's what I'm here for. These guys oh, did because I, I love Coors Light on a you know nice yeah, hot day barbecue. Like light. I'm a um I'm a I like the Miller High Life. You know, the champagne of beer. Yeah, <laughs> we, beer, we, we reviewed High Life on uh, our <laughs> episode seven, man. The uh, what was that? The malt <laughs> liquor, malt liquor, malt liquor. <laughs> yeah. classic, classic episode, man. That was a, a very yeah. underrated. There's a episode, lot of classic man. episodes coming out tonight, man. And do yourself a favor and go back through the catalog if you haven't. All right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, and then after after drinking the uh, Stella's for a good little bit, um, I just came into this point where I was like, I would go to these bars with my family members, mainly with my cousin, like my friends and family or whatnot. And we would go to these bars and I would be drinking beer. Like I'd try out different beers just to try them out. Cause it's like, Hey, y'all got another beer besides Stella. Let me go try something else on tap, you know? And everyone I would go to the bar with will always drink liquor. And, you know, once I started drinking more crafts, um, there's this one hazy IPA. It was an apricot IPA, actually, from a uh, RAR bar up in Cambridge, Maryland. I was I was living up there for a good couple years or whatnot. And I was like, well, let me just go ahead and see what they have. Let me try the new beers. Because I, I tell myself I want to try a beer in every state I go to from that state, from that city, you know, something local. So I was in the area, and I had hated IPAs at the time. Like, I tried Guinness, didn't like it. Um, so that was my whole take on stouts. Like all stouts taste like Guinness. I was like, Mm-mm, not doing that. Then I had one, um, hazy IPA and that was trash. Didn't like it. When I was in Florida, before I moved out of there, they have a bar called, no, sorry, it's a brewery called Funky Buddha. And Funky they have a Hefeweizen and <laughs> called the Floridian. So I could say that was my first beer, like my first craft beer that I enjoyed. And I was like, oh, shit, like, this tastes way better than Stella. Or, you know, this is, it's something different, you know what I mean? So I tried, tried, tried different beers, tried different beers. I would tell my friends, you know, try some different beers. And watching them go through trying beers, it's like, oh, no, nah, I don't like this, and I don't like this. And, oh, are you sure? Are you sure? And I'm like, you don't know what you're missing out on because this beer tastes good, you know? Um, so I just took it up on myself to I – want, I want my friends and family – and more people like myself, as far as skin color, you know, black folks. I want us to get more into craft beer. So which other way to introduce craft beer to people than to make it yourself? Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah so I mean, it, was... it sounds kind of like a lot of our journeys, man. We we definitely did the domestics and then the, the imports. And, you know, we all kind of stumbled on some other stuff that we liked and you know we where we at now basically based off a of craft mm-hmm. brew yeah i know I, I resisted for a long time eric was uh, all because, the time. oh man you know, eric was was arguing with me all the time man well, i ain't drinking this thing, nasty shit 
one thing that just threw me off was the price point. And it'd be like a four pack for like almost a dub. I'm like, <laughs> I, I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? And it's got a lot of bite to it. I just, like, I can't do it, man. But he just kept buying them, kept buying them. Try this, try this. And then I went to Nashville. He put me on to this peanut butter stout, I believe. I'm like, oh, okay. game over. <laughs> game mm. over. Man. Hooked ever since, man. Yeah, so with the with the homebrew, like I started off with like one of them little little Mister Beer kits, that little right. like five gallon barrel, and then I bought like a, uh, um, I think it's another five. I, and I actually it's sitting in my closet. I never tried to even try to do it. But what got you into homebrewing? Well, you told us what got you into homebrewing, but what's your current setup look like? Um, I have a well, I brew in a bag. So okay. they had this method of brewing called brewing a bag. Um, that's pretty much, that's like an introduction way to all grain brewing because I started off with extract brewing um, where pretty much they would already have the mash done for you already. And then they kind of like pretty much dry it, dry out all the grains and then you, you're you left with like this powder. And I think that's what I had. Yeah. Yeah. So I did that for like a year and then I was like, well, I ended up moving. I ended up getting a bigger um, like brewing space. So I'm like, well, I'm going to brew in a bag now. So I have a 10 gallon. No, sorry. I have a 16 gallon kettle and I have a nylon bag and I just pretty much put all my grains inside the bag, let everything brew. Um, I have a, I have a fast fermenter. And that's like a, a plastic conical fermenter. I also have a bucket, plastic bucket. I have a um, kegerator and a keg. And that's pretty much about it. So I have like kind of much the bare minimum of um, what you need to brew all green. But it's like that because of the setup that I have. Um, obviously, well, you know, they, they say... If you get expensive equipment, then, you know, you get expensive, you know, the quality comes out better, but that's true, but it also comes down to the brewer themselves as well. Right. Hmm. Have you ever made one? You was like, oh yeah, this that fire. The first one that I made was that fire. It was a blue, it was a honey blueberry ale. Mm. And it was that fire because it was my very first brew that I made. And, you know, I popped my cherry pretty much with that one. And I took it around my friends and family, let them try it. Everyone enjoyed it. Um, we had like a big party and all that kind of good jazz for like the beer release. Because I had I had left home for like a, a good amount of years. So everyone was asking like, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? And I'm like, well, I'm brewing beer now. So I came back and I was like, here y'all go. Like, y'all been asking what I've been doing? Try it. And everyone was, was digging it. So every, after that, once I gave them like a shorthanded, you know, a tangible thing of what I was doing that they can look at it, look at the um, the color, smell it, taste it, and actually enjoy it themselves, they kind of uh, got on the train of supporting my my craft beer journey. Um, that was a good one. Then I made this. Uh, it was a peach IPA that came out pretty good. I did that for Georgia Beer Day. That was um, last year. Um, I made a I made a strawberry chocolate stout that came out pretty good. I just tried different beers, to be honest. This so, one, this wit beer that I did, this is my second time with it. Um, like I said, I got to go out to the drum board and hit some, but I'm I'm gonna give it a break real quick, and I'm gonna try something else, then come back to it. So my my question is, and this may be a very rudimentary question. Uh, but if you can answer it for me, how do you differentiate between what, what you put in for like a stout or what you may put in for IPA? You know, you know what are you doing differently to, to make those different type of brews? Um, the ingredients themselves, that's a starter. Um, yeah, the ingredients. And then every everything with brewing has, everything with brewing makes a difference. Whether from the ingredients from the mash temperature, how long you mash it, how long you boil it for, um, when you add your hops, how much hops you have or how much hops you add. Um, it's, a, it's a whole 
difference, you know, like the time I made the IPA, that came off complete accident, to be honest. <laughs> really? Like I was going for a whole different kind of beer. I was going for an ale. And this is my first time dry hopping. And when you when you dry hop, you know, rule of thumb is you wait until after fermentation is done, the primary fermentation is done. But I ended up dry hopping it during active fermentation. So that's when the yeast was like really kicking ass, you know. So it 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 like completely changed the characteristics of the whole beer. Oh okay. so that, it's a good thing. Huh. <laughs> so um, but yeah, it just you know, you go through your recipe development. Recipe development is a huge, huge, huge um underrated aspect of brewing. I think recipe development does not get enough attention as it should um so hopefully that ties into what your question was so what are you doing for the stout i mean are you adding lactose no i don't add lactose in my beers um it's just the malts like the the malts the roasted malt so that roasted malt is what give it that stout characteristic gotcha man you dropping some knowledge on me brother so once you tried your hand at brewing when did you make that transition to the media presence and the online thing? Like, how did you how did you build that following? I mean, to be to be honest, I've always kind of been. So I have a radio station. I have an online radio station, PassMyCutRadio.com. And I've always been, you know, hosting nice. events, doing events, um, putting together events at clubs, bars, lounges. So I've always been online for the most part, but the beer aspect of it just took it to like a whole nother level because of the community. Um, before when I was online, people was online to see me, you know, like to see my face. And if it was like, oh, if, you don't, if they don't see my face then you know, that's it. Mm-hmm. But with the whole beer thing, it's more so people can see me, I'm the face of it, but they also see like a movement coming behind and they see a movement associate with it so I, I i mentioned one aspect of why i got into brewing the other aspect is you know past my cup um like I say we were doing parties we still do them host events you know after the little COVID thing that took a little toll but you know that didn't really stop too much of the motion but you know we would hand out cups for our advertising and, um, you know, we would get like, why are you handing out? First of all, the cups are the cool idea. So boom, got that. Then after a while, after a while, folks is like, oh, how are you going to give me an empty cup with nothing inside of it? I'm like, well, all right. You know, one person said that they're just being extra. And then, you know, you hear it again, hear it again. How you give me this empty cup? How you give me this empty cup? And we're in a party environment too. So I'm like, okay, I need to start putting something in these cups. So what can I put in these cups? Um, I thought about liquor and I was like, well, you know, I would have to go, I don't want to go buy Ciroc and buy Hennessy or buy whatever liquor it is to, you know, pour out and give people for free. Pretty much. I need to have something that's, you know, tied to it. What can I do? And then I started getting into, I was like, what can I do? So I was like looking up how to make this, how to like, how to make this. And I was like, well, I do like drinking beer. (laughs) And there is a an issue that I see with my people, like I said earlier. So let me start making beers that I think that I can add certain ingredients that will, you know, attract, uh, you know, black folks. Oh, uh, so you made the Hennessy IPA? I was about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> a, a Remy IPA, <laughs> Ciroc Berliner Wise. <laughs> <laughs> No, but that my so my first one that I made was the honey blueberry ale and it, it, okay. it came out pretty good. So that's that's another reason behind it. So I gotta have basically I wanna have a product behind my brand. Yeah. So Pass My Cup was was a brand before the craft beer movement. Correct. Okay, got it. And then you shifted the focus to craft beer as the brand started building. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. And then everything else just follows along with it. But like I say, if you go check my radio station, I've been doing that for about a good nine, ten years. So, and I mean, it's it's definitely have its um its buzz going for sure, for sure. 
but the buzz for that is different from you know my beer because you know you can see stuff on it's cool to post stuff on instagram and everything but it's not it's not audio so i use my radio station i use that platform for it and then i use my i use like social media presence for my beer Let's talk. Let's talk about the radio station a little bit, because you know that that's uh, that's a new thing for us on the show. Tell us, uh, you know, kind of what you do with your channel. Um, well, we have we have open format for the most part. You can listen to us anytime you want, but we do release new episodes on Sundays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Um, if you're into classic rock, blues, modern rock. That's me. Um, okay. You can catch Sipping on the Rocks every Sunday at 9 o'clock in the morning. That's when that's released. Um, and that's um, EST, 9 o'clock EST. That's when it's released. But you can go back and listen to that episode anytime you want to. On Tuesdays, we have Cool Shit Only. And that's when you're going to hear like your um, your modern day hip hop. You know, your, your Young Thugs, uh, Gucci Mane. GZ, TI, like all the stuff that you hear kind of on the radio, but the unedited version. Um, and then on Thursdays, we do Throwback Thursdays. And with that, you may get anything. You may get something from the 60s, 70s. Uh, you may get something from the 90s. You may get like early 2000s, hip hop, R&B, um, just depending on how my DJ is feeling at the time. And then on Fridays, we got Feel Good Friday. And you're going to get like all the super new release tracks um, like to where if you hear in the next couple months, you're going to be like, oh, OK. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's how we do it. That's how you do it. That's dope. That's dope. So, like I said, you can listen to it anytime. PassMyCutRadio.com. If you have a Google podcast, you can check us out on Google podcast, Apple podcast. Um, Audio Mac Deezer under the same name, Pass My Cut Radio. You all ever ever have guests on the radio station or some you know people coming on? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes we do. We um we just had a live event um not this past Friday, but the like two Fridays ago we had a we had a live event. And we had like a live DJ. He was spinning on there for like two hours. Um, and then other than that, we leave the talk show to me. I don't want to like to like overdo it. You know what I mean? So I, I do my Wednesdays, happy hour Wednesdays. Um, and that's what we have for right now. But we have opened up the uh, opened up like dates and times for people that want to be an addition to the radio show. So yeah. I know podcast is a thing right now, but not a lot of people have the um, the equipment or the platform to do so. So we're offering that for people. Well, I like to say congratulations, man. I mean, to, well, thank you, thank doing you, thank that, you. to be doing that for nine to ten years, you know, that's that's pretty successful. Yeah, you know, got to got to go the flow. It's it's one of those things to where, <clears throat> um, you know, just got to fill up your plate. If you're hungry, fill up the plate. Can't complain about being hungry if your plate not full. Hey, that's true. <laughs> bigger. Bars. That may be the title. That may be the title of this podcast. Fill, fill up your plate. Up your plate. <laughs> <laughs> <You're hungry. laughs> so, uh, I, like we mentioned earlier, I think you and B Dub were chopping it up about you know what I'm saying us polying mm -hmm. about you know what I'm saying hopping on each other's podcast. So let's. Yeah, I got to connect with. Hey, man, we got to set in stone for Wednesday. Yeah, we set in stone for Wednesday, through. man. We coming through. So let's talk about you know the podcast because it seems like the focus is craft beer based upon you know the guests that I've seen come through your show mm -hmm. and whatnot. You know when did you get into that? You know what I'm saying how have you built your following and what made you choose Instagram Live versus you know any other type of platform? Interesting. Okay, so it started off with um, the midst of the pandemic. You know, um, like as soon as I started brewing. Um, I got my first beer. On, I forgot my first brew under my belt. Got a couple more beers after that under my belt. And then the COVID happened. You know, the pandemic comes around. And this is when I was saying, hey, I want to transition the brand 
you know, and focus more so on the beer. So let me just go ahead and get on it. Um, so pretty much no one, no one knew me as the beer guy, you know, like no one knew me, knew, knew me on the scene for the craft beer side. So I was like, let me just go in on it. So I was just, you know, adding new people, you know, taking photos, this and the third and Instagram, believe it or not, this is not my first Instagram from the past my cut page. Um, I had one before when I was in college, like definitely like seven, eight years ago, like when Instagram first, first came out. And that one got deleted. But that one also was based on just like people drinking in general, like all kind of drinks, no matter if it's liquor. It was mainly liquor at the time. <laughs> no one was really fucking with the beer. Um, but that account got deleted. And that account actually had a um, larger following amount than this one. So oh. I'd like start all over. But yeah. I was like, I'm going to start all over fresh this time. And, you know, we're going to see where it goes. Um. So, boom, I got my first couple of beers in and the pandemic hit. So I'm like, you know, what am I going to do with this now? So I would um, go through on Wednesdays and be like, oh, it's Wednesday. This person is a cool page that I just come across. Let me shop them out. And it was basically just a screenshot and, you know, go follow such and such. It's happy hour Wednesday. And I would I did that like every Wednesday, every Wednesday, every Wednesday. I would do a new person, new person, new person, new person, new person, new person, new person. So... You know, like a year later, I moved to Georgia and I'm on the scene out here. You know, it's a Georgia beer day and I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm moving to Georgia. I need to, you know, I need to tap in with people that's down here because one, Georgia is a mecca for, you know, black folks. And like you said earlier, E, that um, the craft beer scene down here is like, it's booming, you know, and yeah. it's booming for, for everyone. But, you know, obviously the, the black folks, you kind of thrive in out here, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I go to one of the events posted, um, hosted by Mikey B party of two brew crew. Shout out to Mikey B party of two, um, had an event. I had my beer out there. The people came through, we killed the keg. Um, so that was great. And then, um, drought season hit me up. Shout out to those guys. Up. Yeah, yeah, out to that's, that's how I came across you all. Yeah. Um, from the last um, web last live that I did with them, but they came through and they was like, "Yo, we want to be in Happy Hour Wednesday," and I was like, "All right, cool." You know, like <laughs> they just threw me in the game. So pretty much, I, you know, I, I got to I tell them all the time. Shout out to Drought Season because they really were the ones who transitioned me from just a post of someone's page for Happy Hour Wednesday to an actual live stream. And they're like, we want to be on your show. We want to be on your show. And I was like, uh, in my head, I'm like, what show? But what I show? Like, no. <laughs> I was like, what show, brother? You know? <laughs> like, you want to be on? So I was like, all right. So I guess I got a show tomorrow. Well, I guess I got a show next week. <laughs> and after that, it was like, well, I can't go back to just posting a photo or, you know, a screenshot of someone's page. Yeah. So after that, I was like, well, I got to get the next one going. Got to get the next one going. Got to get the next one going. And I haven't stopped since then. So it's been like a whole, like, over a year that I've yeah. done every Wednesday, nonstop. Haven't missed the show yet. Congrats again on that, man. Congrats. Yeah, congrats, man. <laughs> so I've, it's seen just a, like, I've seen like three. Yeah, I'll three drink to that. Old. I'll drink to that. And uh, you've had it some is. heavyweights on there. Like we're we're new to the space, so we're not really tapped into the, the major figures in the craft industry. But yeah. I, I've seen some of your guests on there, and I clicked on their pages, and they're pretty major on there. So yeah, congrats to you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. My thing is too is all the people that I've had on Happy Hour Wednesday, or some people that I was actually like had a conversation with as well. You know, so it's, it's not like oh, I'm just like with some people I did shoot a shot, but I also did talk to them like every one of my guests that i have i have some kind of relationship with them okay. via um obviously through via social media but you know some are deeper than others um some of the heavy hitters i talk to like almost daily you know um it's it's cool so like i can say when i when i first i got i guess i got to give it to the pandemic you know everyone's all trapped in the house like you know can't really move too much so I was like, let me just start networking. Let me get it together because I, obviously I, I want to brew this beer. Somebody got to buy it. 
at some point. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, that was really authentic, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to put two and two. I got to build my community. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so once you I have, I have, a, I have, an, I have a whole plan of what I'm going to do with my with my with my with my journey. I just got to um, put it together. You know, I just got to take what I envision and make it to my reality. Yeah, I want to. I, I want to pivot into the merch. Yeah, That's you got to talk about your merch. Yeah, we know the beer cap hats, man. Yeah, the, the hat. I got to know about the hat. I got to know about the mushroom. <laughs> got to coordinate. You said what happened? So <laughs> how did you get into the merch side of things? Did, uh, and do you make your own merch? Yes. So these hats are made by me. Um, we have the cups. Boom. Pass my cup cups. And... As far as with the shirts and everything, we kind of took a little um, halt on that, but it's coming back real soon. Um, but you know, you gotta have the. I can't, like I said, I can't sell the beer now, so gotta gotta have the merch. So I got koozies, um, hat. Sorry, got koozies, hats, and glasses as of now. And the shirts are in design as we speak. Um, coasters are coming up soon. And you know, I saw, from a there, on, I saw a jacket on there too. Oh yeah, that's a varsity jacket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Like good. I say, we we kind of t- we kind of took a toll on because you know those order and stuff like that in bulk with all the uh, you know shit that's going on where everyone's you know uh, either out of stock on certain things or they're they're taxing you know like it's a luxury tax pretty much on certain items or they might have holds on them so. You know, control the controllable. You know, if they can, if they tripping about that, let me, let me use what I can have. Let me use what I have now. And you know, so we have glasses, we have cups, and like I said, the shirts and everything. We're um, we're working on that. Mm-hmm. But how I came about making these hats, I like to make everything go full circle. Um, so I was telling all my friends to uh, save up their bottle caps now that I converted them to start drinking beer now. I'm like, save y'all bottle caps because I'm going to use them for something. And I was thinking about making like one of those, uh, you know, bottle cap countertops that they have at bars. And then I was like, you see that all the time. You know, um, I like to be different. And then I was like, OK, that's cool. But then then I've seen it too many times. Like, OK, that's cliche. So what can I do that someone hasn't done just yet? Excuse me. So the first thing I did after I made my beer, I walked past my fridge and I said, you know, I'm the motherfucking king of beers. So I went to make a crown. <laughs> and I did make a crown. And I'm going to show that to y'all real quick. So hold on. Give me a second. All right. <laughs> he said the fucking king of beers. Oh, the king of beer. That shit funny. <laughs> it's wild, man. Drought season was the first, the kickoff. Oh yeah, the oh. crown, the crown, that's clown uh. right there. <laughs> that's love, right? <laughs> you know you gotta rock that for the rest of the show, right? Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> oh, right yeah. I like you got... <laughs> So yeah, now that's um hold on wait. Now nah, because it's gonna be weird having the headphones on top of it. Oh, oh true story. True story. Yeah. Present a problem. So yeah, so I made the crown. Um so now I only wear that on my birthdays now, like my birthdays and special <laughs> days. I almost actually I did get cussed out one time, but I'm gonna leave that story alone. Oh, um, yeah, man. It wasn't all that bad. So pretty much, okay. So what happened was, um, there was a baby shower on the same day as my birthday, right? So I'm like, I could be turning up for my birthday, but I'm gonna go to the dick shower. <laughs> so I wore my I wore my crown because it's my birthday to the baby shower. <laughs> and the um, <laughs> the the grandmother of the of the child that was at, you know being born thought I was trying to take his his uh his joy. Oh man, you so, upstage the baby yeah. shower, man. <laughs> I mean, dude, dude wasn't even released yet. Right. Hey, <laughs> why you why you why you flex on an unborn like that? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to go out afterwards, but now nah, it's cool. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> Yeah, you should let the granny wear the hat. Like, well, do you want to wear a crown? So that was cool. (laughs) But I I ended up putting the I ended up putting the crown back in the car. But (laughs) I was like, 
I should make more of these because people was like, oh, you should sell them, you should sell them, you should sell them. And I was like, all right, cool. Um, but then the process of getting someone's head measurement and all that, because this, this crown is like really fitted towards my head, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'll have to get measurements for people. It'd be too much back and forth, you know? So I was yeah. like, well, what can I do that's easier? Because I know I wanted to w- make a head piece after wearing that. So then I was like, all right, let me get some hats and see what I can do from there. And you know, I made one and then one turned into two and, you know, then two and a 20, 30, you know. So it's like, all right, bet. Yeah, I see they're sold out. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> and that's, yeah, a, that's, that's, a, that's, a good, that's a good price point you have it there. Too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is that price I, point? I was trying not to do quick math in my head because I was like, man, I don't want to count this dude's pockets, but damn. <laughs> Yeah, you know how you do, E. Hey, um, <laughs> hops and stocks, financials. Mm-hmm. <laughs> financial, financial, financials. So, I would say, just, I was to talk to finances, I would say that some of those hats were um, given at the uh, the homeboy price, but not all of them. Okay. 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 Mm-hmm. That's what's up, though. And the homeboy price is still expensive, so. <laughs> 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 Oh, man, it takes like, a lot of time. It doesn't these, matter. Man. I got, it takes a lot of time with these, you know. Like it looks like this, it looks like so simple, but yeah, it takes it's not. Like a lot of time goes into this, and you know oh, they man. got the new uh, the new real thing that's going on. Like oh, don't ask me for the best prices because I ain't got them. Yeah, or, I like um, that. I, I dig that one. The other one, you know, I I do not do the best. You know what? Dang, it's a it's one that he's saying. Then it's like it's another one. Like, oh, are you an artist? Show me your work. Like they got a whole bunch of them that I'm going to use yeah. for when I make my videos for these. But yeah. no, nah, I like them, and the attention that I the attention that I grab with these hats, it's worth it. You know, like let me let me. Oh, you 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 complain about the price? Let me give you a little test run real quick. You wear this hat for a day and come back and let me know. And yeah. like, oh yeah, let me just go ahead and pay that, bro. Let me just go ahead and pay that. <laughs> <laughs> so man, yeah. I um, like I've been since I'm, I'm relatively close to the Atlanta area, like I said, I've been, you know, trying to connect with what's going on down there in Georgia and whatnot. Um, and like I said, like we mentioned earlier, like GA just seemed to be booming with, you know what I'm saying? Black brewer, black breweries popping up and whatnot. Um, mm-hmm. Talk a bit, talk a little bit about what's next for past my cup. Like, you know what I'm saying? What are you trying to expand into? Uh, what are your goals? And you know what I'm saying? Things like that. Mm. In other words, are, are you trying to open up your own brewery called Pass My Cup Brewery? <laughs> See, at, at one point I thought about that, um, but I also, like, I do want to open up a brewery, but I don't want that to be my main thing, and I don't want it to just be a brewery, you know? Um, I, will, I would love to open up an incubator, like a brewery incubator. Um, what is that? For those who don't know what that is. I want to have a space to where, um, like a G League for breweries, pretty much. So oh, okay. here I am. I own this brewery or whatnot. I have this space. I have this um, equipment and everything. And for the beer brands that's you know up and coming or whatnot, I want to provide a space for them to brew. Oh, okay. And oh, have like, yeah, be have like a, um, like a marketplace, you know. So. Imagine like a mall, you know, like the mall, you go to the mall and see the food court. Imagine that in reverse. So instead of a food court, it's different breweries that you can stop at and, you know, go check out the different brews. You can go brewery hopping to all in one building pretty much. And yeah, at the same time, awesome. I'd be helping out with folks who's, you know, because I see a lot of black people that's, you know, not really say struggling or whatnot, but it's, you know, they're they're not getting you know, the opportunities that people, a lot of other people are not getting. And, and I'm not going to just be like strictly black people only, but you know, if I'm fucking with you and you're fucking with me and it sounds like we could work together, you know, come on in, you know, we assign you for like a couple of years, uh, you know, however you need to have, however much time, you know, that brand would need. And, you know, we just have a space for them to come through and test things out. It's like a uh, consignment shop type brew. <clears throat> mm-hmm. 
So that's what I want to do. That way I'm helping people. I'm not the only one that's eating off of it. I can, you know, give back to my people at the same time. Um, and I obviously want to expand that, but you know, without going into too much details. Um, I definitely want to make everything go full circle. I think there's a lot of stuff in brewing that gets underlooked or overlooked, should I say. Um, spent grain. It's a lot of waste in brewing. Like a lot of water is being wasted. A lot of the spent grains are being wasted. Like it's spent grains. It's wasted grains, pretty much. <laughs> and there's things that you can do with that. Um, um, yeast cultivation. There's a lot of stuff that that's very under overlook and i think with when it comes to brewing and craft beer in general people only look at the brewing aspects of things and we talk about we want to have more people more black people in the craft beer <clears throat> excuse me it, it's not only brewing you know that's all i'm trying to say it's a whole agriculture side of craft beer there's a whole financial side of craft beer there's a whole you know it's a lot <laughs> it is it's it a lot. Okay. And when people only focus on breweries and beer alone, it it um, like mutes out all the other stuff that could be a foot in the door for someone. And I want to provide an area where all that stuff is accessible. That's dope. Yeah, I can dig it. Hey. <laughs> but before I get to that point, I'm uh I'm I'm taking the RV life. So uh, man, I, I would love to do that. I've considered that many a times, man. Do the do the RV life, the van life, or whatnot. Just go around mm -hmm. home brewing. I'm I'm living in my in my camper or my van, so I'm still home brewing. I just pull up on people, hang my beer, hang my beer, hang my beer. But I think that's 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 my next move. That's what's up, though. Man, we want to. As long as you ain't drinking while you're driving on. that RV, brother. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what happened? As long as you're not. Drunk on your own beer while you're driving that RV. <laughs> oh, absolutely not. Nope. Uh-uh. Nope. 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 Mm -mm. I'm only drinking when I'm when I'm stopped and parked because I like to go hiking. So when I'm on the campground, that's be the only drinking time. Mm -mm. Nah, absolutely not. I can't have I can't have no DUI or nothing like that. And I'm trying to open up a brewery. Absolutely not. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Gotta be responsible. <laughs> your, your RV, your RV have party tags on it. Them yellow party tags. tags. <laughs> and everything gonna be empty too. Everything gonna be empty. No open container over here because it's all gone. <laughs> right. I dig it. Mm -hmm. Hey, before so, yeah, we get yeah. off of here, man, we, you know, we we also talk about stocks and you know crypto. Anything that you went to as far as stocks, um, you know, I mean, you know, oh yeah, you, a, you want like specific, working? You want like specific tickers or anything? No, or? I'm just saying, you know, anything that you into, anything you like to share. Um, I think if you haven't gotten into the NFT space yet, I think that's a pretty, um, pretty good thing to start with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or to look into, should I say, don't, no, I want to say start with it, but look into it. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I dabble and dabble into stocks every now and then it's to me, it's all gambling, you know, right. Just invest. If you want, if you say it's investing, that's cool, but it's, it's, it's gambling for the most part. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. And when I look at my, my current account balance, <laughs> it's definitely gambling right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Taking, loss. Taking those losses. <laughs> it's definitely gambling you know, right gambling, now. You're gambling yourself. Yeah, you got to gamble on yourself, man. So yeah. That's how I look at life. Just gambling on myself. You know, invest, investing in myself and gambling on myself. It's, just, right. it's all the same stuff. Um, yeah, but I don't have investment. anything against me. You know, I, I got a little portfolio. Um, it definitely went a little south after the, you know, <laughs> happened or whatnot. But you know, it's it's still positive. It's just not as much as I wanted to. Right. But you got to wait on a, a couple of things. Like I got some crypto that I'm waiting on. The um, you know, hopefully it pops off. If it does, it does. If it don't, it don't. I'm not too pressed on it. Well, but, I want to buy again, a hat. I want to buy a hat in the metaverse. I want to buy one of the hats in the metaverse. Oh yeah, man! You got to turn the hat into an NFT, man. Yeah, oh, that's cool. what I'm going with it. That's what I'm going with it. Okay, yeah. That's how the price, that's how the price tag is high now because, you know, 500 bucks, that's nothing in the metaverse. There's <laughs> nothing in DC. So this Hold is on. kind of a discount. So the hats are yeah, $500? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, the hats are definitely like, uh, the NFT. What's, what was that um, one brand? Three three baller brand? <laughs> oh, oh, the baller brand. brand. <laughs> <laughs> baller, yeah. baller brand. 
you got him back. Now, I would say that. Now, I would say, hold on. I mean, to be honest, like I've been places with people who's been wearing like Gucci hats, Fendi hats, um, you know, Prada hats, like designer hats, and yeah. they would get skipped over and be like, your hat is cool. Oh, that hat is so cool. Oh my god! Da, 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 da. And the person next to me with the with the Fendi hat does like. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nigga, it's it's unique. It's homemade. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah, yeah. So you can you and it's, charge, it's one of a charge kind. your worth, it's man. Exactly. Kind. Charge your yeah, worth, you know, brother. Yeah, Bugatti's yeah. was you know the same price as a uh, you know Honda. You see a lot more Bugattis on the road. Right, we can all attest to that. They they don't have the. It's not the same quality. Definitely has yeah. character to it. Man. Well, if, if you see somebody in the past, my cup hat, you know they got some cheese because they, they right. got a little <laughs> money to pay for. Yeah, yeah man, you got to stop giving money. out them homeboy prices. I charge everybody the five. Right. Yeah, everybody <laughs> five no, no more homeboy prices anymore. That's the hey, option hey. stocks hey. advice. No more homeboy pricing. Hey, you know what? That, that's a good point, man. You set the value. You know, and that's the same yeah, thing yeah. with NFTs are. You set the value on what yeah. you think it should be valued at. And that's that's a beautiful thing. You don't, you it, don't you change know. your price. You make them get their cheese up. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. If you can't afford yeah. it, you can't afford it. I, I, don't, this, this, I don't want everyone to have this hat, to be honest. Right. So I want to, you know, if, if you work for it, you know, I want people to work for it. If you want this hat, work for it. My head too big, man. You you have to put a bunch of uh. It's adjustable. <laughs> <laughs> it's adjustable. I know you're hey, making me. Do you charge per cap. I say <laughs> <too. laughs> so you charge per cap. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might need it. an extra 10, 10 to fifteen caps. <laughs> <laughs> Watch. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, 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 I, I put my own caps on. Like, man, I got some caps. Day when everybody's like, damn. Them hats like ten bands now or something like that, <laughs> you know. It's or some ridiculous price, and I'm pretty sure everyone everyone is gonna know like what's up. Right. I mean, the, ex- the exclusivity mean, makes it more valuable. So I mean, you make them mm-hmm. exclusive, and shit, you know. And every hat is a one of one. Like no matter how right. much I try to make a hat look like another one, it doesn't. Or they're and they're not gonna be the same. Different bottle caps, different designs, different. Um, you know, like color transitions or whatever the case may be. Right. Um, yeah, and I, I hold each of and every one of them close to dearly to my heart too. So every time one of them goes <laughs> out, it's like, I wanted that one. It's See, we would want, we would want a designer. We would want like an H and S designer type situation going on. You know what I mean? <laughs> what's 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 your color scheme? You don't have one. It, it's behind the logo. Yeah, the logo. Behind the logo. Yeah. So we're gonna I mean, go I'm just like black, and, ye- black I'm and yellow. Black, yellow, and red would be our probably our is our primary colors. Oh man, you about to pull out a black, yellow, and red one? <laughs> I'm like, man, got one, got yeah, one got one. One. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Man, hold on, he for real. <laughs> we're gonna have to have a hops and stock shareable cap. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who got the cap this week, man? <laughs> yeah, everybody I'll, put I'll it. Everybody put in one twenty five. <laughs> hey man, maybe maybe five hundred was the uh, homeboy price, man. Maybe it's more than that. <laughs> I'm like, man, do you do you accept uh, payments? Ah, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, oh, yeah, man, it's close. It's close. Oh damn, we got all the colors, don't it? Hey, and all his joints are sold out too, man. <laughs> Every yeah. single one of these things. <laughs> that's what's up, man. Yeah, that's dope. <laughs> I can dig it, man. But Kenny, man, like I said, before we uh before we wrap up, we want to allow you to, you know what I'm saying, shout out your socials. Um, I know you gave out your, your website and whatnot for the radio, but you know what I'm saying, how can people check you out? How can people hit you up? You know what I'm saying? How can people uh get a sample of what you what you brewing and whatnot? Well, if you want to sample what I'm brewing, gotta come check me out in Georgia. Um, not giving out the address, but you know, if you're in Georgia, <laughs> pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, follow me on past my follow me on, on all social platforms, Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook, Pass My Cup. Um, you can also follow Pass My Cup Radio. Uh visit the website, passmycupusa.com. Go ahead and grab you some merch. Got the glassware. 
um, got the hats. And just, um, you know, we out there in the metaverse too, but that's, that's the new Facebook now, Meta. So, um, passed my cup USA on there as well. Uh, gave out the Twitter and, you know, just support. If you want to listen to the radio station, like I said, you can pass my cut radio.com. Um, you can find us on Google, Google Podcasts, sorry, Apple Podcasts, Deezer, Spreaker, Audio Mac. Um, am I forgetting one? I think that's about it. But yeah, pass my cut radio and just follow me on the gram and follow the journey. Definitely got some more stuff coming out. Um, got some big moves. I like to keep things on the, on a DL because, you know, once you start telling people, now they all expecting you to do shit. And, well, and okay. now you, they can just kind of expect to do it on their time. And I'm working on my time. So. Oh, definitely. Most definitely, man. Yeah. We yeah. appreciate you coming through, man. Yeah. No problem, man. We can, oh, and I guess, um, you know, this is a segue. Yeah. You know, check us, check us all. We're going to redo this again <laughs> on Wednesday. Yeah. We'll you be know, on yours on uh, Wednesday, man. Happy Hour Wednesdays, each and every Wednesday on IG Live at 6.30 EST. Um, and, you know, check us out. We're going to have a good time. And I can't wait to see y'all fellas on, uh, on Wednesday. Almost oh, done, sure, man. Hopefully, yeah. I was, um, hopefully, I was a great guest today. Hopefully, I did my thing, you know. Yeah, um, no yeah we appreciate you, brother. Yeah, no you know what I'm saying? I, I definitely check you out. You know what I'm saying? My list is starting to grow. All the people I got to check out in in the ATL area, man. Like y'all, y'all deep down there. Deep. Um, yeah, real deep. But once again, man, thanks for joining Hops and Stocks episode thirty five. Signing off. Steve, we out. Hell yeah. Podcast is presented by Hunter Smoke Media Group. We encourage our listeners to drink responsibly. Please note, we are not financial advisors. We do not offer or provide financial advice. Trademark copyrighted by Hunter Smoke Media Group.